Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another Fallout 76 Weapon Spotlight. Today, we're going to take a look at a bloodied lever action rifle with limb damage and uh, less VATS AP cost. So it's it's got some pretty good perks for it. The limb damage, eh, we'll, we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Remember, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. There's always a lot more to come on the channel. Without further ado, as always, we're going to take a look at the weapon, we're going to take a look at my build, and then we'll jump right into the testing run. So, for those of you who are not really interested in watching the build, I have included uh, chapter markers so you can skip ahead. But for those of you who want to watch, we'll get right into it. Let's take a look at the weapon. So what we have today is a bloodied lever action rifle with 50% limb damage and 25% less VATS AP cost. So. The bloodied effect, as we know, at low health is going to be the hardest hitting, biggest damage dealer of all the legendary effects. And as a stealthy rifleman, it's fairly simple to do a bloodied build. You're not taking a lot of hits. So it synergizes well with that build. Less VATS AP cost, definitely a good thing. We'll take advantage of that because this is a VATS critical build. So uh, that'll be good. Even though it doesn't give us more criticals or, or better criticals, we still get to use the weapon in VATS more, so that still has a net positive effect there. The limb damage effect, I'm not so worried about. That one's not doing a whole lot for us on this weapon. Uh, the goal here is to kill pretty much everything in as few shots as possible, so I don't think anything's really going to live long enough to, uh, to experience the problems that come with limb damage, but, uh, you know, it's there. We'll see if anything happens with it. As for mods, I've got a hardened receiver. Aligned long barrel, true stock, that's going to all help with our uh, with our uh, VATS AP cost. Reflex sight for the same reason. Suppressor so we can stay nice and sneaky. And I didn't put any fancy paints on it or anything like that. I actually like the way the lever action rifle looks by default. So that's the weapon. Let's go ahead and take a look at some build elements here. We'll start with mutations. This is my bloodied stealth commando build, which I've modified very slightly for a single shot rifle. But we've got the same mutations as uh, as usual in that build. Adrenal reaction for more damage at low health. Bird bones and marsupial so we can jump high and land softly. Carnivore so meat does uh, makes a little more magic for us. Chameleon, which is utterly useless in every way. Eagle eyes for a little better critical damage and more perception. Egghead for more intelligence, which means more XP. Healing factor so I automatically heal in between fights. I like that. I know some other people don't. I don't care. I do, so we're good there. Uh, scaly Skin's going to give us a little more damage and energy resistance. Speed Demon, so we move faster and reload faster. And this build does have Talons in it. Uh, not really, doesn't really have any negative effects. Nothing substantial because of Class Freak, but uh, doesn't really do anything for us today. Let's move on to Legendary Perks. This is my main character on my PC build, so of course I've got Ammo Factory maxed out. Uh, that's going to just make my life easier and help me make way more ammo. I do usually run it on all characters, but uh, most of them aren't high level enough to have that maxed out. We've got Legendary Charisma for some extra Charisma points. Uh, not the ideal way to do that in hindsight, but I'm kind of stuck with it now on this and a handful of other builds. But uh, if you do Legendary Charisma, unfortunately, it doesn't let you share more perk cards, so better path forward there is uh, use something else for your legendary perk and move points to charisma if you want them. But here we are. I'm stuck with it now. Uh, follow through is another really good one for your sneak build. Anytime you land a sneak attack, it's going to make your enemy take more damage after that for about 10 seconds. So that can be pretty substantial. Most enemies are squishy enough. They die really quick, but uh, there are a few where it's definitely got a benefit. Next up, we've got Funky Duds. Uh, with Funky Duds, I get a little extra poison damage resistance when I'm wearing a matching set of armor, which I am. This is all unyielding Secret Service armor today. So I find that's useful when I go up against Scorch Beasts, which I do fairly frequently. Finally, we'll wrap it up with Legendary Endurance and Legendary Luck. Legendary Endurance I have so I can take a couple more Legendary or a couple more Endurance perks particularly Revenant, so that during normal gameplay, if I get uh, revived by someone, I will come back and do extra damage. So that's pretty useful. Not going to do a whole lot for us today, but under normal circumstances, I like that. 
And then I've got Legendary Luck maxed out so I can get lots and lots of Vats Critical perks. So that's the legendary perks, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on to the special build and regular perk cards. So for this build, we've got, uh, this is normally a stealth commando build. So I've modified it a little bit, but not a ton. Um, strength, we've still got two points for bandolier to keep our ammo light. Perception is still maxed out. Unfortunately, on this character, I didn't have enough level ups. I didn't think I needed them, but I did didn't actually have the Rifleman perk cards on this character. So what I did today was I just took one in each rank. That's going to be good for a 30% increase. The way that damage stacks since one wasteland, I don't think that's going to make a significant difference. So I think we're going to do okay. We may see a few times where we can really say that, hey, if we had a little more damage, that would be good. But uh, I think we'll be able to, to put two and two together on that. Ground Pounder, Tank Killer, Concentrated Fire. Uh, concentrated Fire rank 3 makes sense on a rifle build because of the way that your hit chance increases after a miss, where only rank 1 really makes sense on an automatic. But this is a single shot, so we're okay there. To make up for some of that missing damage, I did take Glow Sight, but I don't think that's really going to come in all that handy today. Under Endurance, we've got Radical for more strength when my rads are high, which they are on a bloody build. Revenant, like we talked about during Legendary Perks, for more damage after I get revived. Under Charisma, I've got Tenderizer, so uh, my targets will take more damage after they're hit no matter what. Strange in Numbers to uh, maximize mutation effects, which isn't going to be a factor today because we're running solo on a private world. Thus, I have Lone Wanderer for, again, a little more damage resistance and uh, some better AP refresh. Under Intelligence, we've got Nerd Rage for more damage at low health. We've got Gunsmith and Scrapper, so I can scrap things nicely and get lots of steel back. And my weapons don't break very quickly, which is definitely improved since the last patch as well. Under Agility, we've got Covert Operative, and so that our sneak attacks do extra damage. Sneak, so we can stay nice and sneaky, which is potentially a little bit of overkill, but I don't really have anything else I need there, so I'm okay with that. Escape Artist, so we can sneak away and get out of trouble. Gun food to automatically swap between targets and get a little damage boost with each one. And adrenaline so that we can uh, do increased damage as we go through bigger and bigger mobs. Under luck, we've got Bloody Mess again for extra damage. A whole bunch of different Vats Critical related perks. Serendipity so we can avoid damage at low health. And then, of course, Starch Genes and Class Freak so we can keep our mutations and reduce their negative effects. All right. Enough chit chat, let's jump over to the white spring and start killing things. Now, I think this is gonna go pretty smoothly here. This should be a really, really easy run, but we'll see how it goes. All right, headshots, one shots all around. Easy enough. Vats is working well. Now you only have five shots in your magazine with this weapon, so it is smart to uh, tactically reload when you can so that you don't get overwhelmed. But in here, fortunately, things are going down in one shot, at least when uh, when Vats actually processes. And all those guys are dead. We've got one still asleep over there. And we might as well grab a little bit of loot from you. And we've got one up there. So, so far... This is uh, stupidly easy. And that's kind of what we're hoping for with a weapon like this. The goal here is to kill things with one shot as often as possible. Now, torso shot there outside of that still took two shots. So your headshot, headshots and vats are definitely ideal. And gun foo makes our target swaps nice and easy. Got a little bit of distance there, so no big deal. Vats criticals aren't even really necessary on the ghouls. We're doing enough damage between sneak attacks and headshots to uh, deal with our problems efficiently. Let's go ahead and just sneak our way downstairs to finish cleaning out the golf club. Sometimes you got somebody creeping up the stairs. Uh, not today. No, almost. Still easy enough. Head over into the pro shop. Take you out and then try and get in position for gun food to do an automatic swap between all three. Perfect. That's exactly what we're going for there. 
And we'll make our way to the back towards the locker rooms. And we've usually got two in the little lounge here. You're dead. How about you? You're dead too. Got some coming around the corner. Okay, I can pop you through the doorway. That's fine. That works too. And there should be... Sounds like a Wendigo over in the locker room. Just want to make sure we're clear here. Sometimes they stay asleep, but not today. They woke up. And we put them down. Two shots on a level 75 glowing Wendigo. So Glow Sight probably helped us out a little bit there, but uh, that was very effective. Without that, maybe that would have taken three shots. No big deal. And why not kill off the Rad Roach? I think we get the idea here. We're going to run outside and just, oh, we'll finish cleaning up the, uh, finish cleaning up here. Never mind. Got ahead of myself. All right. We'll take out a few more outside. And then we'll head over to the deep. There should be just one or two hanging around here. We'll get a critical on. So I did hear a lot of people talk about how bad one-shot rifles damage became after One Wasteland. This is the first real close look I've taken at it. And I can't say I'm really all that upset. Definitely isn't as good as it was, but uh, I heard some real horror stories that are clearly just not true. This is uh, taking out pretty much everything in one headshot so far. I'm sure we'll get uh, a little more of a challenge further on, but so far so good. Let's jump into the deep. Making our way up our favorite communist catwalk. Check the ammo container. Okay, liberators are going down in one shot if they're close. And a little too much range there for a one shot kill. Oh, you need two? Okay. That looks like he went down in one shot. So far, so good. We'll watch uh, Concentrated Fire do its thing and increase our hit chance. Okay, we went in danger for a second there, but now we're clear again. I want to go ahead and clear the catwalk as easily as possible because uh, one thing with gunfu is sometimes it snaps you around unpredictably, and I don't want it to snap me over the edge of the catwalk and down into that... Uh, fiery pit of ultracite goo. That would be uh, unpleasant. So here's the big benefit of a weapon like this, of course, is you've got really good range. So it does very efficient damage at range. So we can clear out targets before they become a real threat. We'll head around to the back. We've usually got two more back here. Will we one shot our power armor commander back here? That's the question. Let's find out. With Vats critical, we did. We'll make our way inside. Clean up the rest of the commies. See who's left. Anybody in here? All right, one shot kills across the board so far. So early on, we didn't have that. I think that was probably just a combination of range and the fact that we didn't have, we probably didn't have adrenaline fully boosted up yet. There we go. Even from hip fire, we did all right. So ground pounder still does seem to help with single shot rifles as well in terms of hip fire accuracy, which is really good. You get that nice tight little crosshair and you're dead too. And I think that takes care of business here. Let's jump on over to the pond and see what we can do with a behemoth. All right, so we're going to run down, but I'm going to try and sneak up. And here we'll probably be able to see that follow through legendary perk do a little bit for us. So we'll land a sneak attack and then follow that up for more. We've got a VATS critical. 986, 986. So you can see the increase on the follow up shots. Follow through definitely works better. I've noticed with single shot weapons. Uh, with automatic weapons, it doesn't process that quickly and sometimes feels a little useless. But on single shot rifles, I've definitely noticed that it, it seems to work exactly like it says it should. So keep that in mind if you use it. But let's go ahead up to the Fisher site and uh, take out some Scorched. 
and a Scorch Beast. Scorch Beasts are no problem with automatic rifles, but we'll have to see how we do here with, uh, with a single shot. Okay. All right. Almost one shot killed the... Uh, there we go. Once we got a little adrenaline, we're one shot killing even the level 100 Scorched. So this weapon is definitely doing what we would expect it to do. It's a one shot kill on pretty much anything as long as it's in range. That was well out of reasonable range for that shot there, but it still only took two to take it down. That works for me. Now we've got to get the Scorch Beast's attention. We want to get his attention, keep him focused on us, get him close enough that we have uh, ranged proper ranged damage. There we go. Now we're coming in close. And now we have follow through kicking in. We can see that it's doing more damage. Now he's out of range. More one shots on the Scorch. I hear more of you. Okay. Eh, we're still missing. Still missing. Still out of range. Not getting a whole lot out of that. But we've got his attention. There we go. And some of these hits just, uh, some of these VATS hits just didn't process. So that's still an issue. It's definitely better than it was, but it's clearly still a problem. But ultimately, I think this weapon's doing pretty darn well. Let's jump over to Huntersville and wrap things up. We'll just make our way through the uh, little floater patch here, wake them up. We're still sneaky. Okay, so they're a little tougher. Okay, we got a little adrenaline. You can see the effect there. And one more shot should take you down. Very good. Okay, so finally saw a couple of things that took more than uh, more than one shot to take down, but that's okay. They're expected to be tougher enemies. I imagine some of the super mutants will be the same. All in all, I'm not really seeing a huge difference in performance from a fixer or a handmade. Um... But there is a little bit. Some of those level 100 enemies weren't going to be one-shot kills with an automatic rifle. So, okay. So far, so good. Oh, look at that. We leveled up. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice, everybody? All right. We've got you hanging out here. And two hits on a 75. Okay, I can live with that. I can live with two hits on a level 75 super mutant. That's not, that's not unreasonable to me. Critical, one shot. There we go. Almost one shot at him now that we got some buildup going on. Okay. Who else do we have hanging around here? We should have two in the hardware store. How you doing, boys? Yeah. This is the end of your day. This is the end of your shift at the hardware store. Two shots on the level 100. Pretty much to be expected. Same thing on the Hound. Again, I don't think that's unreasonable. Would I cry if I killed them in one shot? No, but I can live with a little bit of a challenge. That's okay by me. And we've usually got one or two living upstairs. Got a little super mutant bromance going on up here, but not anymore. All right, we'll... Grab some caps and some ammo. Make our way up to the other end of town. We should have a boy and his dog walking down the street here somewhere. Where are we at? Oh, maybe you're all hanging out together. Oh, level 50. You should be one shot. Easy enough. Dog down in one shot. And we've got a 60 under the bridge. What do we have here? Done. Easy enough. So, let's talk conclusions. I think, quite frankly, this one's pretty obvious. If you're comfortable with a bloodied stealth commando or stealth rifleman build, bloodied lever action rifle, at least for general use, is going to be one of the best weapons in the game, hands down. This run that I make is a pretty normal farming run. Nothing was too difficult for this weapon to handle. We don't burn through a lot of ammo with it, so... It's an excellent day-to-day -day weapon to use. Now, is it going to be ideal for boss fights like the Scorch Beast Queen or 
um, or Earl or the Imposter Sheep Squatch? Uh, no, it probably isn't. And that's simply because it doesn't fire fast enough. You're going to be reloading it too often. So switching to something else there is going to make sense. But that's okay. That's the beauty of the Stealth Commando slash Stealth Rifleman build is all you've got to do is swap out a couple of perk cards and you're ready to rock and roll. So have your bloodied automatic rifle that you like to use for your big boss events and then have something like this laying around for just general farming when you don't want to burn through a ton of ammo and kill things very, very efficiently. So accuracy wise, no complaints. I don't have all the mods for this weapon, but I think I had enough of the right ones to get the job done. And uh, it definitely served me well today. I'll be holding on to this one going forward. I'm very pleased with how it worked. As I mentioned before, I heard some horror stories after One Wasteland came out about bloodied rifleman players taking, you know, 25 shots to kill a super mutant. I, I, I don't know what they were doing. Uh, I just don't. Is it as powerful as it used to be? No, but nothing is. But uh, it's clearly not. Uh, the apocalypse has not befallen the stealth rifleman build. And I'm willing to bet that even if I wasn't running this at low health, I still would have been pretty pleased with the performance. My guess is some of those super mutants would have been two or three shots. The ghouls still probably would have been one. Um, most things still would have been down in one or two shots across the board. So I'm not too worried about it, even if you're going with a full health build. But all in all, big fan of the weapon. Definitely enjoyed it. I love that they, uh, now this is old news now, but they did fix the reload animation on the lever action rifle for Fallout 76. So I do like that. It's a fun weapon to use. It feels good. It feels natural. And that's really about all I've got to say about it. It kills things quick and it kills them efficiently. And there's not a lot more we can ask for out of a weapon in Fallout 76. So with that, I'm going to sign off for the day. Remember, if you enjoyed this, if you found it useful and you want to see more Fallout 76 videos, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment. I do hope I see you next time. Until then, I'm Fisty McRib.